It did not come as a surprise when the report of the presidential visitation panel on the University of Lagos indicted the vice chancellor of the university, Professor Lua Tunyi Ugundipe, and his management for wrongdoing. For about two decades, the Nigerian university system has been plagued by mismanagement, corruption, sex for great scandals, and myopic labor unions that have compromised the integrity of the institutions and progressively lowered education standards at the tertiary level. Is it any wonder then that several Nigerian graduates are uncompetitive and hard pressed to justify their paper qualifications after graduation? We're joining us now to discuss the damning report of the Unilag Visitation Panel and the measures that need to be taken to reform university education in the country is Professor Boniface Oye Adeniro. Professor Oye Adeniro is a retired professor of obstetrics and gynecology, College of Medicine of the University of Lagos. Good morning, Professor Adeniro, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, Prof, it's good to see you again after quite a number of years. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. Uh, the visitation panel report uh, on the University of Lagos and all of that conflict between management and council. Uh, the report seems to have arrived at different conclusions from that of the special panel that was earlier set up by the uh, president. Uh, what do you think the problem is? Can we rely uh, on this latest report or should we wait for a white paper? I think the latest report vindicated uh, the Babalakin led council that they did the right thing. The, the special visitation panel, one was not surprised at their conclusion because it was made up of professors, former vice chancellors, and you are now asking them to investigate their, their own member. Whatever they come out with might also affect their own future. They might have done the same thing in their various universities, in their capacities as vice chancellors. So I, I was not surprised with the first panel, the special panel, and I spoke out about it. I wrote about it, and I said the panel was inappropriate panel to investigate the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos. The chairman of that panel, Professor uh, Tuku Sahad, disagreed with the main report and confirmed that what was going on in University of Lagos was corruption and that the Vice Chancellor, Professor Tony Ogundipe, was uh, virtually converting the institutional fund to his ATM machine. The present report showed that the council led by Babalaki monitored events in the university rightly, rightly set up a disciplinary panel and Riley came to conclusion that the vice chancellor should go. The vice chancellor was given um, fair hearing. It is not true that he was not given fair hearing. He wrote a defense while I was in council. He orally defended himself. All the allegations, there was none he defended well. He had no answers to the allegations. i give you the first example. Splitting of contract, renovation of official quarters of principal officers of the University of Lagos. The total amount went up to 114 million naira. His approval limit is 2.5 million. So he went above approval limit. He did not take it to tenders board. If he did, the tenders board approval limit is 50 million naira. So he needed 
uh, appointment, uh, he needed the uh, F and GPC, Finance and General Purposes Committee, and Council's approval for what he did. He never sought approval. He renovated his own quarters for 49 million, 2 million for furniture. While a professor needed a mere 250,000 naira to repair a leaky roof. And they told him, works department said there was no money. Here is a vice chancellor that renovated his own official quarters for 49 million. That is the type of thing that goes on in the University of Lagos. Corruption is endemic, and unless the vice chancellor is asked to leave, by the time he leaves, he will have totally destroyed the University of Lagos. Well, in view of a um, topic we just discussed in our African business updates, how Nigerian businesses are spending 55 billion dollars on foreign professional services. This indictment here is particularly galling. This is exactly how come that we have this kind of capital flight. Because this money is not in a vacuum, is it? If you're spending this money on renovating your home, that money is being denied where it's supposed to be, and people are being deprived. Nigerian students are being deprived. I'm sorry, corruption in academia is particularly disgusting. But beyond what you've said about how the, vice, the VC has been exposed by this report and should rightly go, according to you, beyond that, would you be advocating some kind of criminal action to be taken against those who have found wanting in some way, especially with the looming specter of another ASU strike? I, I, I think to send a good signal to other public officers, those who breach the procurement law should be tried. They should have their days in court. The punishment, one, dismissal, two, five years imprisonment without option of fine, and three, access forfeiture. If they have their days in court, others will think twice before stealing public fund. Yes, the university governing council should try. Herring academia. But my problem with that is the punishment in the act is either dismissal or termination. Another council can come and pardon them. So besides council's disciplinary action, they should be sent to the court of law to defend themselves. All right, uh, so in all of this, uh, because I, I read the report extensively, there was also a portion about some monies even donated by Wale Babalaki. Uh, how was that money managed? you know, to certain departments and the likes. And secondly, isn't it best for even Wali Babalaki to come here and come, you know, throw more light as regards all of this happening and probably even hear from the vice chancellor if he's willing to come here because, you know, when you hear all of this, it doesn't all go well for the university system in Nigeria. I agree with you. Um, the principle of here, the other side should apply. So please call both Dr. Wali Babalaki, son, and Professor Oluatoi Ogundipe to come and defend, uh, to come and hear their own views uh, in the uh, whatever they want, uh, whatever uh, they want to say about uh, the report. The report is overwhelmingly detailed. And every page of that report is uh, what Wali Babalakin Council had found out. There had been what you can call endemic looting of University of Lagos Fund 
at the University of Lagos by principal officers. They simply did not think that a visitation panel will come and discover all the corrupt practices. And I think the panel headed by General Martin Luther Aguay had done a good job. And I commend them. They are men of integrity. They have done the country uh, proud by what they have done. And I commend the president, President Muhammadu Buhari, for setting up the panel. The panel was fair because everybody that wanted to see the panel was allowed to see the panel. And they listened attentively. They were fair in their questioning. And they were not hostile to anybody that appeared before them. Unlike the former special visitation panel that was hostile to anybody that was coming there to say anything against the vice chancellor. I think if this is replicated in other quarters, we might be dealing with the issue of corruption gradually. Well, Prof, uh, well, we need to take a short break. When we return, I would uh, ask the uh, next question. Thank you for staying with us, Professor Yadinero. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Arise News Channel. Still with us is Professor Boniface Oye Adeniro. Professor Oye Adeniro is a retired professor of obstetrics and gynecology, College of Medicine of the University of Lagos, and has been discussing the report of the visitation panel uh, to the University of Lagos with regard to the conflict between the Governing Council and management. Governing Council led before now uh, by Dr. Wale Babalaki, SCM. Professor Yadinero, thank you very much for staying with us. We have two questions. Thank you. Now, when I read the introduction earlier in the morning, uh, I got text messages, uh, not even from professors in, uh, in the University of Lagos, but from IFE, Obafemi Awolo University. And they said, ah, what is uh, Professor Yadinero going to say? He's one of the accusers of uh, Professor Uluato in Ugundikwe. Uh, so they prejudge you. They just assume they already reached a conclusion as to where you will stand in the matter. I don't know whether you want to respond to that. But the question that I really mean to ask you is, why is it that, look, in many of these universities, there's always this conflict between management and council. Council, well, majorly political appointees because the entire council uh, represents everybody, including even uh, representatives of the alumni association. But why is it that management, you know, is always fighting chairman of council and it's always about money? And in that regard, I speak from experience. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I was a member of the governing council before I retired. I was there 2017 to 2019. So it was a council I was part of. And the indictment started while I was there. So there was nothing new about what I say about uh, Professor Luatoni Ogundikpe. He was found to be diverting funds. Contracts were being awarded without contract agreement. Uh, and uh, accounts were not properly kept. There were 29 um, um, areas where they were generating income, internally generated revenue from 29 entities. Only 10 were visible to council. There was also the issue of about 10 billion naira that was also not visible to council. 
that Oluwa Toyin Ogundipe sat on. These were all the allegations against him. And he was asked to defend himself. And he did not appropriately defend himself. He, up till today, all the publication in the, pap in the newspapers, at no time did he deny that those things he was accused of, he didn't do them. Nobody has read anywhere where he has put up any defense. And I know in the past, some television stations have invited him to come and defend himself. He has refused to turn up. Which meant those accusations were true and he had no defense for them. As for the issue of the conflict between the management of the university and council, it is because they have not read the law well. The law establishing the University of, the, the university of Lagos Act is very clear about the oversight responsibility of council. It is not right for a vice chancellor to believe that he or she will operate outside the law. And that is what is happening in the University of Lagos. No rules are obeyed. The act are breached with impunity. If Oluwatoyi Ogundikwe continues as vice chancellor of the University of Lagos, he will have destroyed the University of Lagos before, by, the time he, by the time he leaves. And to me, it is high time he left. It's too late in the day to leave him on that seat. Because he had continued to loot. He has graduated from stealing to looting the public fund. Well, we do hope that um, Professor Gundepe and, of course, Dr. Babalaki accept the invitation that we've extended to them this morning. I want, my question to you is when Professor Okundepe was reinstated, we all saw the scenes, didn't we, of that sort of triumphant entry in a university campus. Can you explain that? Is it the same thing that we see when politicians are welcomed home warmly by the very people that they've looted after they've served a jail term? First and foremost, it was return on a false premises. The the narrative of the special visitation panel was that he was not given due process. He was given due process. Two, his return was disgraceful. They were drumming. They were dancing. That was like a political scene. In an academic environment, one expected, if he wanted to enter triumphantly, for an academic procession to be planned, a situation where a vice chancellor started dancing to uh, music that are reminiscent of a, a campaign rallies of the politicians is disgraceful. And I believe that I hope future vice chancellor will take a cue that we are in an academic environment and we should behave academically. Uh, apart from all of this, I want to move beyond this now. Let's talk about the university system in Nigeria. Let's talk about ASU. Possibilities of another strike coming up. The university system, we got a report this morning that Nigerian companies still have to look abroad to get talent for their business because we've not been effective, we've not been able to effectively train engineers and people of different you know, specialization in this country. What would you say is wrong with the system, the university system in Nigeria? And how I, can we start to fix it? I, I, I think, with all sense of responsibility, that the federal government of Nigeria is responsible for the deplorable state of our universities. How can you be setting up universities in every village in Nigeria? They've turned the university establishment to contract business. 
And after they set up the universities, the universities are not properly funded. There is no university in Nigeria today that is properly funded. That is the bitter truth. And the federal government should stop establishing universities when they have not adequately funded the existing ones. That's my own take. And ASU has been reacting to breach of agreements. Government will enter into an agreement with ASU. And government will not fulfill what they have promised to do. That is what is bringing these incessant strikes in different sectors of the economy. Government should focus on a few areas. They should not be competing with states, establishing services that states should run. Federal government should establish what you can call services that the state will emulate, will see as an example. They should establish centers of excellence in every aspect of the economy. They should not compete with the state. And university, the universities need to be properly funded. They should stop establishing universities in every village of Nigeria. It does not help. It breaks down the quality of administration, quality of teaching, and quality of our graduates. Well, Professor Yadineno, yes, pro proliferation of uh, universities in Nigeria is one of the concerns of ASU. And you have just articulated the standard argument by ASU. But can the federal government, despite the fact that we have a national universities commission, stop state governments from establishing uh, universities to serve the needs of their people? And then, of course, we have the private universities. We have so many of them now. I was on one highway the other day, and I counted between the uh, commencement of the journey to the end, over 10 universities uh, along the way. Yes, it's the federal government that gives these licenses. OK, what do you recommend? That some of those licenses should be canceled, or the National Universities uh, Commission uh, should withdraw accreditation for some of these universities. Because when the point about proliferation is raised, it looks like a done deal already that these universities already exist. I don't think any state should have more than one state university to start with. The second thing is that some of the states are setting up universities when they are neck deep in debt. Why should federal government approve university for those states that are owing so much money and they are not likely to pay soon? Those universities will be established and they will not be properly funded. Now, if you look at some of the universities, who are the people there? They are not indigents of those states. So universities have, have been turned to commercial business. It is money-making venture rather than centers of excellence. Let's talk about other issues apart from proliferation, which might not really be neither here nor there. The real issue really is funding of universities. What would you suggest as a better model? Because the government is clearly unable to do it. We've seen different strikes prove that point in the history of this country. And also, with regards to university management, it's quite clear from this report that we're seeing that professors might not necessarily be the best managers. Should it be outsourced? I don't think so. Uh, professors know the universities very well. And the bad eggs should be weeded out. Those who are stealing should be dismissed. Federal government should be firm when it comes to discipline of erring chief executive. Now, the issue of funding the university, federal government can fund only a limited number of universities 
because of the resources that are not there. Two is that they should give options to universities who are ready to get out of the MDA business. That is, they want to stand alone, they want to generate their own income, and they want to run the university as it is done abroad. The, the federal government should allow for that. I know ASU is opposing that, but I think it is high time the universities to the loan because government cannot properly fund all the universities they have established. The other thing is, why should anybody establish a university his children will not attend? Those are the questions. People celebrate their children graduating from foreign universities. These are decision makers. These are public officers. These are the people who establish the same hospital, the same universities in their villages. That should stop. The universities should not be university for the poor. It should be for everyone. If everybody uses the university, if everybody, if the decision makers send their children to the universities in Nigeria, they will upgrade the universities, but their children are not here. So the universities are mere contract business and commercial ventures. Well, uh, Professor Oyeadeniro, on that point, I mean, we had uh, Dr. Chris Ngege on this program uh, a few days ago, on, on another program on this station a few days ago, and he was uh, saying that his daughter graduated from the University of Lagos, in fact, from the Faculty of Medicine. Maybe perhaps it's an exception to the point you are making. And I guess there are probably other public uh, officials whose children are attending Nigerian universities. But I get your point. Thank you very much for joining us on the morning.